Welcome, people. I was just playing with my iPad Pro here because I updated it to the iOS 11, 7. Whatever. Have you done your phone yet? No, no, I wait. Me they too. just put out 11.01. Um, but I, I can't find the... I can't swipe to the right anymore. I can't swipe... I can swipe from the bottom, but, like, no longer do I have oh, any of that stuff that I needed. Oh, I was like, what's that sound? I can hear the intro. I absolutely despise hearing the intro during Every the show. Every second time you've, you've asked. So I need to just do my intro, right? And then that stops? Correct. Oh, God. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo dot com, And welcome to Raw Talk episode 229. So much to talk about is what Live I said. Live direct. <laughs> I There's a lot to talk about. Yeah, I didn't come up with a title yet, but I'm going to have to come up with something that's probably clickbaity just to get people to watch. Oh, that's really? That would be yeah. that's really so out of the ordinary. Yeah. Crazy. Click. Really click, crazy. Click, click to the bait. Uh, so if you're watching at home right now, we are live switching with the live stream HD, HD. 4 550. Oh, HD 550, which is capable of 4K, 4K. which 4K. means one day we'll test it out with the D850s. D850s. But right before the show, I was reading that Livestream sold to Vimeo because hmm. Vimeo has gotten rid of their on demand. They were going to try and compete with Hulu and all these other people by making live, uh, not live, by making shows and things like that. Well, they failed and they have, have uh, pivoted to go towards. Live? Did they That's say for all how our much? pro it, subscription money's going? Well, so it didn't. It didn't talk about for how much money just yet. I'm sure that will come out. But they they are going to offer all the employees jobs. Like there's 138 of them or something. They're going to offer them all jobs with Vimeo. The CEO of Livestream is going to be the head of live at Vimeo because they're trying to do this live push. Nice. Now, we're in the midst of having to decide to buy this. We actually have to send this box back yeah. now. Um, this is the one that B&H hooked us up with yeah, for a little it took, bit. for a couple weeks. Yeah. They already asked for it back. And we've only used it ago. twice. This is the second well, time. We only used it twice for this, but they... Yes, dude, we need it back very soon. We got to figure out if we're going to... Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be an expense. I mean, we're going to drop like seven grand. It's or very expensive. To, to do it new, it's it's ten just under ten grand. But I will say it's... It's awesome. You love it's what great. it does. It's an all-in-one solution for live. But we could technically, theoretically, build a box, but then it's not as neat as building I, I one I love together. their software here, too, because everything's already ready to go. Pictures can be inserted, video clips, uh, sound effects, really anything. So it's going to be like our fully polished show, yeah. but as long as we do some pre-production, yeah. which we rarely do, uh, it'll be fine. No, I did see the, the first place I saw this box was at Funny or Die, this was exactly what yeah, they were using. Yeah, you're the one using. that told us about it. And they were also they also had the backpack to do wireless from the from out and about. Like so, they could have a direct connect from do somebody. They dance with the backpack at all? Do you want to <laughs> do you want to demonstrate it? Oh, of course, something's gonna break. I can't do it here. You know, something's gonna break. Can't dance um, here. He can dance if he want to. He can dance on a man to pan. Mm. He can dance with a ching in his pants. Oh my! Oh, oh my. my! He can dance. If he wants to. Uh, so they had this live cellular backpack that they could live stream in from cellular. And what it did, it had it had a Verizon wireless card. It had an AT&T. It had a T-Mobile and a Sprint. So did they build that themselves? No, or that was that's like a live what you stream? can buy. You, How much does you that buy cost? That. It's probably expensive. Mm. But you buy it, and what it will do is find the best signals or use two of the signals and be able to get everything split could, out. Could you output like 1080 on that? Maybe. I don't know the answer to that, Stephen. Wow. I didn't see how they did it. But don't it, ask it, him technical questions. It was pretty awesome to, to get to that point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I did it right whoa, before whoa. the switch, right? <laughs> Jared loves it because he can see the program output of the live stream right in front of this two shot. Squirrel. Yeah, so if you ever see him staring at the middle angle, it's because he's watching his himself. No, I'm looking at the camera. That, he's is looking, it, at, his, he's he's looking at his arm. Stephen, like, like, is the camera he's, moving? He's, like he's like, <clears throat> Stephen, so, is the so camera Steven. moving? How does it look? Everything looks good, right? Yes, the camera's Steven? moving. I can't even Dan. tell if the camera's moving. I think the camera should move faster. It's actually at half speed right now, which is the fastest I've ever put it on. So anyway, we are um, we're live editing, which is amazing. Live switching, yep. Live switching because that saves three days of editing, <laughs> yeah. basically. The, so the turnaround time, really, all we do is take that program output, which has all the graphics, everything already overlaid. Sync up the cleaner audio that's compressed in post, which takes maybe about an hour to do, and mm -hmm. export and one and done. And so what Way happened easier. What happened last time is we decided to put the live show up the same day we recorded it. Yep, on well, Facebook. Now we know we could do that. Well, we put it on YouTube too. 
I mean, I put it up instead of putting it up on the Sunday night like it normally goes. I mean, live. we live streamed. Well, we live streamed on Facebook yeah. last time. We yeah. live streamed on Facebook last time, but then Stephen edited and within a matter of hours had it ready and to go and up on YouTube to go live in like four hours. And instead of holding it till Sunday, and I Captain just, Patience was like, "Yeah, let's put it up right it. now." No, right first now. off, you guys were the ones who oh were pushing for it. My. Yeah. You were the ones pushing for it to go live. Well, right I just away. think we need to figure out a, a new schedule for going live, and are we still going to stay Sunday nights for Raw Talk? Yeah, I don't see any the reason final polished version as of right now to not put that up and have that go Monday because I need to get on a schedule. Everybody, we need to be on a schedule. Yeah. Like Tuesdays is right now is um, uh, photo news fix yep. time, and so. Debating whether to do photo news fix Tuesdays and Fridays if there's enough news. It does take time, but it those have been going very well, and I think you guys really have enjoyed them based off of the comments and the interactions. They do very well on Facebook as well. And it's great um, to turn it around in a day. And so I've been working on some of my own stuff. Should I talk about that, or do you want to talk about the Bend stuff no, first? No, you talk about your own stuff. So, so that le- you know, I've been working on my own stuff, editing my own. Yeah. Um, I've done... Vlogs, my, right? Well, I've done vlogs. I did a... Flying solo, a new form of flying solo. Like maybe flying solos go up every Wednesday. Maybe a new raw edit, not a raw edit. I haven't done raw edit in a while. Maybe a new rapid fire critique goes up on Thursday. So this is essentially you talking directly to camera, right? Which one? Uh, the vlogs and the flying solo. Well, the vlogs are me doing whatever a vlog is. Well, and you're talking to camera. I'm talking to the camera, yeah. and then I'm cutting in B-roll, cutting in audio. There's actually two of them that are up right Jared now. Editing. I did. I. Uh, oh yeah. I loved your transition. What yeah. Todd? What? <laughs> it's all Jared, by the way. <laughs> I love the first one, and everybody's like, this is, you know, for being a raw edit, you did a great job. You, you just keep doing that. I'm like, if you only knew. If you were only on the phone for three hours with me. It was only an hour. <laughs> it was an hour. It was only an hour I was on with Todd, but we sat there with Skype, and he could, he, he could see my timeline. And Now you know the pain we go through every edit. Yeah, but you know what? My edits are much quicker and much better. and Because uh, they're half-assed. They like are not. Todd. Else. Todd. You got to preview my flying solo. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's nothing extravagant about it. Yeah. Well, it's it's not, not the deal. And I'm fine with that stuff. It's just yeah, you talking and answering questions, whatever. It's more than yeah. that. It's Steven. not a full on real world review. It's more than that. It's more I than that. Excuse it. me. I put audio Cheesy bed. transitions, cheesy audio. No, there wasn't a cheesy, there were no cheesy transitions in that one. He's causing my slides being cheesy. Oh, the slides are okay. I know you should probably talk about the circle, circle wipe. The circle wipe. There's which like a I star actually, wipe. Which I actually talked him into. I know. He told me. He's like, Todd told me. I'm like, why would Todd tell you to do that? I did it on purpose. You did it on purpose. <laughs> but let me, let me tell you why I've been doing this stuff. It yeah. goes back to one of the things that we did in Bend, Oregon, was film a video called Just Start. Yep. Uh, the night before, I went to bed, and I had an idea, and I was going to text Stephen, but he was out shooting stars. I was going to bed because it was late. It was like 12.30, I think, yeah. Well, I went to bed at like 11.15 because we were up at 5 in the morning. But, that was a long day. Um, the Just Start video was, was simple. If you have an idea for something, for anything, find a way just to start. And I've said this a million times. That I don't care if you don't have a lot of money. I don't care if you don't have a lot of time. I don't care about not caring. All I care about is that you just start something. And if it's the very minimal of what you can do, then just do it. Just start it. And that was the point of making that video. And I did a little different. It was very Bob Ross sounding. There was no intro because the intro just didn't fit into that type of video. And a lot of people are like, wow, this is a calmer Jared. Never heard him like this before. But no, I, I talk like that sometimes. It's, it's, it's how you used to talk in videos. I feel like you were very not. more, you were way more calmer. I wasn't Back calmer. I just didn't know how to deliver things like I deliver now. I just mm. certain things I get up for, and I want to show it, and I explain it, and and I feel that that's engaging because I get bored with certain other type of YouTubers. But I think people like they get bored. down to earth, like realness. Well, I have both, so there's a mix sure. of that. You've yeah, got the vlogs that are doing that; they're giving you a behind the scenes look at at what I'm doing and what's going on. Um, the one I filmed today that I have to edit it, edit uh, involves going to the gym, going to the dentist. So it, it's around health and the reasons that I started working out and the decision I made to start working out, which was simple. I, I think I was 28 and I didn't want to wait for, you know, a lot of people like, I'm going to do that when I turn when I turn 30, I'm going to start this. Yeah. Well, and you I, should just start. start. You should just start. <laughs> so the is moral of the story I, I came up with that. is that you should just start. Yeah. No. So. 
basically with the working out, I was 28 and I'm like, I'm not going to say, well, when I turn 29, I'm going to do this. I did it. I did it that time, that day. You just I started. started to find somebody that make the process, put it into motion. And I went from there. And that, that I, I attribute working out and feeling better. Well, I don't know that I felt better, but I looked better in my own better. skin. I looked better in my own eyes. Uh, that gave me the confidence to get in front of the camera earlier uh, where I failed in the past. And I'm glad you're back to editing some of your own videos, like the, the smaller content in terms of how big the video is, uh, because that can leave Dan and I alone for a while to get like real world reviews done and a lot of the bigger content. And I think it gives, I think it gives the audience a different... A different uh it gives the audience a different um, story, like a different angle of stuff Jared doesn't get to talk about necessarily yeah, with a sure. review. He's not going to necessarily talk about at length why he works out or about Alan's camera in a review. And it's not all photo-based, but I do think that health, working out, going to the dentist, that type of stuff all attributes to staying healthier, which means you're able to go to work. You're not calling out from work. You feel better. You're able to function at a much higher level, which means your brain is firing at a better uh, optimum power. It just, it all, it, it's, it's, it all works together. Yeah. So anyway, that was the just start part of it was uh, when I make videos like that, part of it is that I need, I'm really talking to myself and I feel that I should share that out with people. I'm not going to ever turn into the guy. And if Todd, if I ever do, will you Will you please smack me in the face? Wait, how soon can I do this? <laughs> if I if I start to sound like a motivational freaking guru, because I do, ne- do okay. not ever. What do you do? Get, you need get to just in your start. seat. Oh no! What I oh, don't you want mean from the future now, from here on out, or <laughs> yeah, from, like from five minutes ago? <laughs> five minutes? What? Is, no. Can from, I smack you retroactively? No. For all the times? No. From, that you yell at you yell at people on camera. The yelling on camera is fine. I'm talking about motivational stuff like, you were born for this. Like, you need to just start. No. Like that. Just starting. <laughs> Get him. I wish we had the GoPro angle. No GoPro angle for you. We might be able to do that next time. Just, just starting is a... It, it, that's not sitting it's there the being like... the video you're talking look, about. no. If you just started, imagine what would I'm happen in this definitely world. definitely slapping. I mean, <laughs> right? I think I need to... I mean, I think it's no, slap time. I, mean, I think it is slap time. This is not that. This is me. If I was to be that motivational dick, it would sound like the new beginner guide. It would to be like just start, right? It'd probably be like just start. I mean, yeah. No, it would be like this. Do you want everything you've ever dreamed for? Because if that's what <gasps> you just want, start. you can get there. You can do. You have it deep inside of you. And I have a guide. Deep, just for you. Super deep inside of you. You know that you are capable of amazing things. Don't let anybody ever trample on your dreams. Oh my God, I got something deep inside of me. <laughs> don't let them ever tell you. Don't let them ever tell you that you are a failure because you look in that mirror and tell yourself every morning, I am great. I am good. I'm amazing. Can we so just what's put the difference that clip up? <laughs> what's, the what difference? YouTube and yeah, what's the difference between doing that in the mirror and doing it on Snapchat or, or, or Instagram stories to everybody else? Who does that? I'm great. I'm awesome. <laughs> so or awesome. his inspirational Twitter posts. They're the best. Oh, Who yes. does that? No one would do inspirational <laughs> I, I anything. Wanna, I, I, I almost feel like I've got like 10 and, retroactive slaps already banked. I, I mean, right I'm now. waiting. Just no. Like, I do not. Like, no. I stick. I'm gonna stick with, just, just get, just start something. Just start. I'm not telling people that if they That's start, right that there. they're gonna get their wildest dreams all answered. No, but if you just start something, shit can happen. Yeah. All right. Now we're back to the real we Jared. Go. That's the Jared there we, we all know. That is. Dan there he comes. That. Here he comes. Dan anticipated there he that edit. Is. And why is Dan even here today? Why are we all here today? Dan should be changing a baby. Yep. He'll be doing that changing what, a baby? tomorrow like night. He's going to switch the babies out at the nursery? or <laughs> like, No, Todd. Oh. No. Let, can we move on? Yeah, let's Please. Do it. Just God. start. What? <laughs> <laughs> Dan like that? Dan like that? We need a Dan cam. <laughs> yeah, we do. Anyway. Just when he's... <laughs> <laughs> it, should be, it should be sound activated. <laughs> so two weeks ago... We were out in Bend, Oregon, Stephen and I. Yeah. Uh, 
Nikon reached out to us, and actually me first, and I fought to get Steven there. Me first. They said that we're having a trip, a press trip, yeah. a press event, uh, where we're taking creatives and writers and bloggers and vloggers to come yeah. out to uh, Bend, Oregon, to use the camera. Yep. So what they do is they, and I'm not Dan. I'm not going through anything yet. Yet D850, D850, where you can. They, they set up the shoots, but not like set it up and say, here, take a picture. All this is simple. No, they let you do your thing. Yep. And so. And they sent us a whole kit beforehand with the camera, a couple lenses, a backpack. Terrible backpack. Uh, memory cards. Did I you mean, dance everything. with the backpack? Uh, actually, I did at one <laughs> of the dinners. Did dance, yeah. I was teaching everybody how to do the backpack dance from I got the it backpack kit. Yeah. I, I can't get it. Steve, our buddy Steve there. He never saw do it. it. No, he never saw it, but we Steve, showed it to yeah. him. Steve is one of the coolest guys. But no, we're really appreciative that Nikon did this. Uh, I trip. love press events. So if anybody from any company wants to take us on a press event. Sony. So, Sony. <laughs> uh, Canon has already taken us on some. Uh, what was that Kind noise? of. Canon hasn't really taken us on like a full on press event, right? Like uh, to go out to Cannon? shoot pictures. No, but they took us. They've taken us play, yeah. to the Burbank opening. The Burbank so, the Expo. Like oh, but they didn't take like us that. out to Yosemite. That's what I'm saying. What a bunch of oh. shit. I forget which camera that, that was. That was the 60 Mark II. The 60 Mark II. Which we didn't they go to that. did not do. Oh, yeah. speaking of, let me, I need to retroactively go backwards because I could have, I wanted to show my vlogging rig for my vlogging. This is what I'm using. And you don't think that's too heavy, right? I mean, it is. It's not your brother, but it's still a little heavy. Um, so what's on here is a 60 Mark II that we're using that Canon sent us. We've got the 16 to uh, 35 2.8 version, version 3. Yeah. They have an F4, right? They have an F4 IS, yes. God, if they had an F4, wow. that is the lens that I should put on here. I don't really need the 2.8. For some reason, I thought you had that one. You don't we have that one? We sent it back. They, they, oh. We used that last time. Gotcha. Oh. But on top of it, I've been using the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This is the brand new microphone that they've come out with, and it automatically turns on when you turn on the camera. That's great. Um, it turns off when you turn off the camera. And it has a rechargeable battery. It has a rechargeable battery that gives you up to a, a, a thou, uh, sorry, 100 hours, and you recharge it right in, inside if your battery's ever like via dead. USB, right? USB. If you ever forget, uh, mini USB, yeah. micro USB. Yeah. If you ever forget a battery, takes two double A's right off the rip. Where before it was uh, nine volt, and it was a pain in the ass to find one the of them door sometimes. Did open, yeah. Now the door's much easier to open and close. There's a safety track that will do 10 dB less, right? I, it's, uh... Maybe 12, I'm not really sure. I think it was 10. But it's a stereo feed, and then you get the one regular standard track and then the extra mm -hmm. right side Why is or that something. important? Tell people real quick. Well, it's great if it's overmodulated or something that you can then rip that right channel out and then export that in stereo and have a much cleaner feed. Yeah, I mean, you say it's you're awesome. shooting video of like a guy who's trying and attempting to not talk and yell so well, much. Well, just yelling. And then he ends up doing his normal and just yelling at the camera. Sounds about then, right. Then, it, you know, you'll have a clean signal either way. So we use the safety track a lot. <laughs> Just we don't Jared. use a safety track, no, we but don't. Th that that's it's great to have though. Th this this microphone's two ninety nine. Uh, it's great for vlogging. It's great. It's what I'm using for the photo news. Not the photo news. It's what I was using. Um, well, it's what I'm using vlogging. It's also what I used on the first episode of Flying, Flying Solo. Solo. That's separate. Um, just talking to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have the auto levels on on the camera. The only time I will turn the auto levels off on the camera is if I'm in a location where it's just yeah peaking or something, mm -hmm. and I don't want it to be owl. If I can be in more control, like technically in here, I can set it to manual. Yeah, I mean it I works be able to do good it. enough. The auto levels, it's gonna peak and hit every once in a while, but it's not that big of a deal. Morgan and I use it on a Sunday, so just auto. Yeah. Well, now I actually set it to manual. Yeah. The real way. Yeah. Professional. But, you know. Professional. Yeah. Because you, you can always assume you know how far away your talent's going to be if you're doing this. Yeah. So you can kind of set it to that. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I like to be a pro. But, How's that you know. water? <laughs> you guys like my new water jug? <laughs> nice jugs. 2.2 liters of water. Cool. It doubles as a weight, too. It's like 10 pounds. So if you ever get, you can just Drinking start. my water. That's not what you're drinking, buddy. Um, so Bend, Oregon. Back to Bend, Oregon. Do you want to go down the things list of things that we did? Yeah, it should all be in order. Oh, you did this. Yep. Let me check my notes. Bend, Oregon for Nikon event. Models. Dan, we shot models. So the first event that they had us shoot, which was when we got, a little after we got there, after giving us good lunch, by the way, they took care of all the lunches. It's great food, yeah. I got a Thank God. Caesar salad for him. with salmon and a caprese salad. 
as my lunch. Yeah, you got two. I got that two days in a row. Yeah, I, I did, but I didn't drink beer. I didn't. Dr- I didn't ask I did. for a freaking whiskey list. Who asked for a whiskey? You list? know who asked for a whiskey oh. menu? Oh, <laughs> he, get, nice. he sits down. He goes, "Can I see a whiskey menu, please?" Uh. Like, are you kidding me? Yes, yeah. they're they're being nice and taking care of spending, but you don't ask for a whiskey menu. Why not? I'm sure they Why would pay not? for it because I don't. I don't like overdoing it. No, I, got I know. I know. Two of salads. Yeah, yeah. They were like appetizers. Yeah. Um, so the first shoot was a make-believe couple Engagement that they shoot. just got engaged. Yeah. Mm. So these are the these are the couple, the lovely couple. Her name was, I think it was Hannah. These hold it right there. The, well, don't hold it. You let it roll. There were so all the photographers are just camping around doing like shooting the same boring stuff the whole time. I finally took the models away from everybody after they were done doing their thing. Yep. I wasn't a, I wasn't being a dick, and I had them. You know, we got some awesome slow motion. Slow mo with the D850, yeah, because this was all done with the D850. All that shot on the D850. They set some great stuff up for us to shoot. Um, this was the model. She asked if she could touch my hair. She played with your hair, and she clearly loved it. I mean, look at that face. Oh my God, look at her. <sighs> She's like, I thought she was gonna rip your hair out. I know she looks. She looks. Uh, yeah, she looks like she's she going to, to, and you're like, stop it, stop like, it, oh, oh stop. <laughs> and then you actually went up and posed with them. That's golden hour. Look how beautiful it the, looks. The right light there. was beautiful. It was a great shoot. Um, I mean, you had full control of the models. You could really take them wherever you yeah. wanted. Yeah, I was like, point to your future. Yeah, you did that a couple. <laughs> of times. I did that because that's just like, what? What the hell does that mean? But it was just a way that we could get some interesting photos. Even in one of the photos, I. I, I showed all the people in the background just sitting, drinking beer. I mean, it was more of a social thing. I don't like when they just... I don't like pose shots, personally. Yeah. And that seemed to be what this part was. But but why don't I jump in and say that the D850 Real World Review is live. It's uh, fronosphoto.com slash D850 to go download raw files. You can download some of the files from all the shoots. The, well, both of the shoots. Um, but how, how did the camera work for you while you were there? So I did basically just video. We initially went in... Uh, thinking that we were going to do just like a vlog, like a recap of the entire trip, and we kind of switched it into a mini review. But it may go end. back to a vlog? Uh, no, probably more of a mini review at this point. But uh, I did only video on the D850. We were going to bring our normal Canon setup, but we're like, hey, it's a Nikon trip. Let's test out the camera while we're there. So I would never normally use Nikon for like autofocus video. Well, let's get it out there and just put it, make well, it clear that just say Nikon it, autofocus video doesn't exist. Yep. Uh, it's no dual pixel AF, but. Full frame, 4K. So I would try and manually rack a couple of times, and I did that with like slow motion with 120 frames per second, 1080. It's a little soft out of a DSLR, but it still looks incredible. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, the 1080, I shot that slow motion. So many clips the entire trip. I've yeah. got awesome stuff of you, of the kayakers, of all this stuff we did, motocross, backflips, yeah. uh, people jumping on each other like that engaged couple. And then Fake I also shot just normal 4K 24P, and I would just use this Akuto Z Finder and... Use that the entire trip, and it looks great. Yeah. So yeah, here's some slow motion footage right here of you just walking. I walk <laughs> like a freaking gorilla. Well, your whole your whole hair just comes down every time. <laughs> yeah. So we moved on. They they took us out to a motocross track. Yeah, this which was, was cool. great. They had this whole track set up. This one guy was truly a professional. Incredible. He had his son out there on a bike too. And then his friend or yeah, there was a younger guy who was it seemed to be new at jumping at stuff. That. But Oof. but there was some massive jumping going on, and I will say that the D850 held up really well in continuing continuous autofocus uh, for the things I shot. I know there's some videos floating around that are saying that it doesn't rate nearly as good as the uh, D5. Yeah. All I can tell you is from an actual real world situation, not something set up in a park, is that we all shot this guy jumping. I followed him. Yeah. I was doing nine this frames is, this a second. Is the slow motion too. Oh, that lo- you did this? Yeah. That looks incredible. That matches my photos too. I know. It looks wow. great. Yeah. So... And you were just manually focused, right? Uh, I think I preset on the hill uh, when he first jumped. Right. And then I just locked in at that point. But I never really auto-focused. Yeah, I would rack I, manually a lot of times. I, okay, Let's pause go, it. But, yeah, don't do that, Dan. Dan, can we actually go back to that mountain shot? It was like two clips before this. Oh, did I forget the mountain? Yeah, like this. Can you pause right here, actually, for a second? It doesn't say mountain. It says motocross. I just want... No, I mean this actual hill. Oh. The mound of dirt. Um, now, this mound of dirt... We actually got so close. You could see the one photographer on the right side. They would let us shoot right there as he's backflipping and, and all that kind of stuff. Did you get that close? I, know I didn't I did. like that angle. I you went over there. I didn't. I wasn't a fan of it. For I video, liked, it was. Whew, I liked awesome. being further away, getting the the profile shots, and I shot a little wider to get the ground in there a little bit on some of them. But what I found is that I was shooting with um, 
the battery grip yeah. with the D5 battery gave me nine frames a second, 100 megabytes per file. A lot of people are like, well, why don't you shoot compressed raw? You know, Dan, actually, come back let's to see us. some of those. Let's see some of those pictures that Jared actually shot of the motocross. There you go. Yeah. That's a Superman thing. Now, that's just the top of the hill. Yeah, it's because I just needed the lock in. Um, I that's followed awesome. him with little can can action right there. Bam, bam, I think that's what bam, it's bam, 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 bam. Yeah, it's a can can. Yeah, that's a can can. There was some Superman stuff going on. Um, he did I think backflips over and he over. He was just doing. But the only thing with backflips is if you take a picture of just him backflipping, it's literally like you just flip the photo upside down. You really down. need to to see. You have some perspective of like where's the ground. It needs to be almost an ultra wide shot at that point. So I'll say that they're nine frames a second. Unbelievable that that camera will do nine frames a second, pushing a hundred megabyte files through it. And like I was just gonna say, and you people, never slowed down buffer wise. You could, you could do 21-ish shots, which is the same 20. thing that you can do in your 5D My 5D Mark IV. is about 21, yeah. Um, but if, if, if I was... I wonder if I was just shooting with the XQD and not the SD. The XQD is literally like that. Super fast. You take pictures, already to the yeah, card. Yeah, so the SD slot, though, isn't that UHS-2, though? It is. So I wonder if that's also... I think UHS-2 is, what, 300 megs a second for the SD slot I'm that you were I'm not familiar. Using. I'm not sure. The card, oh. the Lexar card. Oh, I had the fast card. I had, I had 128s in there. Um, and they were... I think it's 300 megabytes a second, yeah. Where the uh, XQD is like 440. Yeah. It was, it was, that was cool. But yeah, I, I will not shoot the uncompressed RAW. I don't know why. Uh, sorry, sorry, the compressed RAW. I'm shooting 14-bit uncompressed. Even though it's compressed lossless? Yeah, but... No visual loss of data? But couldn't you be losing something? Well, I know theoretically I'm sure you are, but You're it's probably lossless as in like to the human eye. I don't know. Right, but the file is 50, it's half the size. Yeah. And yes, half the size is great, and maybe if you're shooting weddings, you want to shoot the half size. When I say weddings, maybe if you're just shooting the party stuff that nobody really cares about over time, you yeah. can shoot that Grim medium or smaller. But there has to be, how do you have a 100 megabyte file and a 50 megabyte file and tell me that they're going to be exactly the same. Is, is Pied Piper here? <laughs> we need that kind of compression. Yeah. I mean, how many... I mean, if you do this, you can get four. <laughs> in and out. In and out. <laughs> but if you go on in this out, angle... It no, it's got to be this <laughs> We're going to have to cut that out. <laughs> what? No, this is the most efficient. The only time you're going to see that live... Cut the feed! No, that's not getting cut. Uh, anyway, um, so that was motocross. Then... I wanted to ride a horse. Yeah. I was yeah. super excited to ride a and horse. And super scared. <laughs> I was nervous. I was nervous. They're big animals. They weigh like 500 pounds. And they have a... Uh, this is one of them. I think this... Was this Warrior? <laughs> I forget what... <laughs> I didn't get on that horse, but... But when I tried to get on the horse... <laughs> Look at them. The yeah. horses were freaking out. They're like, hey, jump on the horse. So he's like, like, this what? is... He's like, this is going to be your horse. And he's like, okay, that's get on not that. going to be your horse. And then... And then I try to get on the horse. Well, then the horse starts taking a dump. Huge dump. That's going to be great <laughs> for, for the video. And then I broke the horse. Well, wait for it. You try and get on it. Oh, yeah. Let's... let's. Uh, All right. Everything's cool. The horse has calmed down. Let's jump on it. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm like, thank you, The universe is just telling guy. you not to get on that horse. So I finally get on the horse. <laughs> I'm riding the horse. More slow-mo, 1080 footage from the The horse uh, isn't listening. DM50. It decides to just gallop. Yeah. I didn't say, he ya gallop, or kick him. He kept telling me to kick him. I wasn't going to kick the horse. I didn't want to kick the horse. You know, clack your heels on the horse like well, Dorothy. Right well, before I mean, you, you, you don't want to be mean to another, another, another being with a big behind, so... <laughs> How could you tell the horses and Jared from one another when they were walking down the down They both the road? have beautiful manes. There, there was a point where the, right before that one clip when you were riding the horse, like the two horses came together and I thought they were going to like jump up and start like fighting at one well, point. Well, because that, that other it stupid horse decided to just run right it, at yep, us. At like full speed. And I'm like, um, Jared's left. Like riding all slow and the other horse is coming full speed at him. But he's just like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, uh, what? He's like, oh, they're friends. You rode that horse for literally like four two, minutes. Yeah. Four minutes. I'm like, um, can we go back now? He's and like, then I, I got on there and went around the entire golf course. And we were fine. There was one part where died. the sewer like freaked out from the sewer. The sewer grate. Yeah, it what? saw that and it just like started freaking out and almost jumped up. And I'm like, uh, what's going on? I used I to do that when I was it. on my bike too. I'd freak out of it at a sewer grate. My question is, I actually glanced at, at the video because I yeah. can't see it over there. Yeah. Um, did, were you on in auto at all, or you were just straight manual? I was the straight whole manual time? the entire time. The only thing I was riding was the ND filter, just for exposure purposes. I would rack manually for the right. slow mo footage because it can be a little shaky and still look incredible. But in Good terms question. of uh, just 4K 24P, I would just 
pre-focus, lock on, and then just do some subtle, subtle like movement. So we, but I was handheld the whole time with the Zakuto Z. Yeah, no manual, no auto focus at all. That you weren't really letting it do that. Maybe exactly. just to lock no, your focus because the auto focus in the D850 and um, it literally just yeah, it racks. It'll it'll uh, back focus, then front focus, then back focus, and then finally hit your subject. Yeah. Well, I, I saw a video that kind of did that, and I wasn't sure if it was that auto focus or not, but. And That's sometimes tough. I think I did hit autofocus in the middle, but I wouldn't use that like probably in post yeah. for the final review. But That's, uh, that's a shame. It look, the, the picture looks good. It looks good, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a little soft for the 1080 slow-mo, but it's good enough. On what? For the 1080 slow-mo. Like, slow motion footage always looks a little artifacty and a little softer than standard footage. But you nailed your focus on it. Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. Like, other people, some other people that, time. that were shooting were doing a lot of manual type shoot. Sorry, auto type shooting when it comes to video. Steven has a knack for riding the ND filter and just knowing that it looks good and shooting. Fl were you flat in camera this time or no? This time I actually, because I thought we were going to do it vlog style, I had everything pretty much ready to go in camera. So white balance was set to daylight. I had a standard standard picture profile with, uh, I think contrast lowered a little bit, um, just to get that sky exposed properly. And everything looked pretty good. Really yeah. good for, especially run and gun, literally hand holding it. Yeah. I, I was pretty I had the happy VR with on it. the lens. Well, that was a 24 to 120 is a very good run and gun lens, Great right? Run and gun lens. Especially yeah. when you're shooting full frame 4k. Yep. So, and well, I was at 64 ISO, uh, 99% of the time. Right. Cause you have that capability. Super clean. So what's the, uh, what's the next Footage we have, Dan. Roll that beautiful. I think we beam have footage. Smith Rock. Oh, uh, Smith Rock next. Oh no, oh, no, we no, actually we have Smith Rock. We did. Yeah, that's Jerry Gionis. I've never met. I have met him. I interviewed him once actually for something. Um, but he was there. They brought him in. They brought in a bunch of models. He was helping direct. He was really, really incredible. Really good. Awesome um, dude. I loved hearing what he had to say uh, about posing and models and where guys should put their hands yep. when you're taking pictures don't have their thumbs hanging out of their pockets because now they have two penises sticking yep. oh wait i'm not and supposed to and they're wait, pointing he said, don't use that <laughs> and they're pointing, and they're right, pointing at right at the actual at the area yeah so this is uh her name is Yvette. She's she was a model great. yeah this is slow-mo from the camera again everything you're seeing is the dh she's giving you those eyes She's giving you those eyes. I think well, I wasn't filming. I think you were directing her though. Oh, I was at this point. Yeah, Yvette, look at me. Ooh, Stare at me with hey, those eyes. What's up? Hey, do you want this hair? Do you want those thighs tickled with this um, hair? <laughs> you, uh, tell, you tell her to just start. Just I was like, uh, just start, and she's like, okay. And then oh, but same setup as before. We had two models, a guy and a girl, and I think they were supposed to be. Was it just married or just like an, a regular shoot? With they two were up. Oh, there's a laugh. They were they were engaged Ooh, also. And then we got you. Oh yeah, did you like that? I was just posing. I was like, mm, right here, you can pose. Oh, so this looks really good if you're listening on the uh, podcast audio. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting. Oh yeah, right there. You like that shot? This podcast is definitely more of a visual one to watch. You like that we shot? Recapping Steven? most of the trip. Cool. Great bokeh, Love buddy. It. Yeah. Great bokeh. Great. Um, so Jerry Gionis was incredible. Pause that, Dan. But Jerry Gionis was on point. Like watching him pose a model within three, four seconds, having it be perfect. Perfect. I'm and not capable of that. Me either. The littlest things he would notice and just be like, pose a little more this way. And he would always say, like, show your model what you want by actually doing it yourself. And he also made a good point out of the, the whatever you stick out will be the closest thing to the camera will be the biggest. So if you have a big fat arm, yep. then don't put it there if that's it. If you want your arm to be showcased, you put it closer to the camera. So now Jared's always going to have his arm towards the camera. No, it's more it's more He's like this. Like, All right, let's start the show. <laughs> oh, that, that 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 doesn't even need to be towards camera to know that you're you got to. We badonk. need to actually back that away more from camera. Can we put it out the door behind you? <laughs> you guys suck. Uh, and then what else did we do? White water rafting. So well, not kayaking. Only, we shot kayaking. We first. shot kayaking. Then we shot white water rafting. Then you were trying to fly the drone, and the drone freaking oh my gimbal. God. I got to send it back to DJI. Well, and I think it is because you're supposed to have that little clasp on it at all times. Well, well then we why travel. don't they make it so that that clasp? Why don't they make it so that the lid that you put on yeah. top of it has it built in? I agree. Because that that's a, this is the second time I have to send the damn thing back. So basically, the gimbal right now on the DJI Mavic that we're using, I had it in the backpack the entire time without the clasp on it to hold the gimbal. I've never had the clasp on it, Stephen. Uh, yeah, we've never had it. And but I think with just hiking the entire day, the gimbal was shaking. And then when I actually went to take off with the Mavic, mm. it was freaking out. The gimbal's like moving all around. It gave me a gimbal error. Uh, it started wow. like flying away, and I was just 
It was a mess. I don't even know if that's really truly the, the, the reason. I don't know. I don't know. But we have to send it back to them. They sent me a label. They're going to take a look at it. Well, I had a gimbal issue that one time I, when I was shooting the B-roll. Was it with the Mavic or with the Phantom? No, it, was with the- uh, it was the Phantom. Similar thing. Weird gimbal and camera flopping yeah. around. It was a, uh, But it was a, a software update. And I did fully update. I updated the firmware, the controller, everything. Fully huh. updated uh, before we went out and shot that. But um, I don't know. We, we got also it. got the opportunity. So, Dan, you can run the footage of where we shot. We the got kayaking. the opportunity to go whitewater rafting. So this is us shooting pictures of the whitewater rafting. Well, Not kayakers. a great angle. Yeah. Sorry, kayakers. Um, but then we had the... Uh, we got to go whitewater rafting. And there were only three of us in our boat. So our boat was super light. And we got to, we got to ride out there. And it was... Uh, a lot of fun going whitewater rafting. Here's us actually in the boat. I wore GoPro. a GoPro. We were going to give it to you, but I'm like, well, I actually, I should wear it because I'm going to be on you most of the time. So at least we can see That's you. That's a good idea. Yeah, because at first we were going to put it on Jared. Oh, so this is when Jared ran bull. Road bull. Road bull. The woman's like, you can ride bull. I'm like, what's that? She's like, put your legs over the edge of the boat and sit there. He literally gets on the edge of the... I'm like, okay. Yeah. And we just go through this one rapid and it was pretty intense. That was probably a class three. Three and a half. I thought they meant you're like just as we float down the river that you're going to be hanging out, you know, oh, she riding wanted, bull. She said, she's ride like, no, the bull. through the rapids. And Vimeo, I'm like, ah. ride the bull. Yeah, Vimeo. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, so can I find your stuff on Vimeo? So this is a girl, uh, the girl you can probably see in the first clip, um, but <laughs> she is very old school. She still like reads the newspaper every day. Younger too. Yeah. Probably closer to our age, yeah. I'd say. Yep, sure. Um, and she's just very old school. She kept calling Vimeo, Vimeo. She like didn't know like how to watch YouTube videos and like stuff like that. Do I have to subscribe to it on the, on the cable? Yeah. So Dan, you want to run the last bit of photos that you have from there? So you get, so people can see them. So the autofocus again did very well for me, continuously focusing with all of that water going and getting the water just on his face. Yeah. It looked really good. Uh, I'm very happy with the results. This is a uh, from courtesy of the, the camera, camera store, store TV, TV guys. guys. Shot this. There's the girl in the background. That yeah, I was that's talking the girl. About. <laughs> that's us. We're, we're. I wasn't really paddling because we couldn't touch the water. So well, we almost hit the side. Remember, at this point, she was like, we were very close to hitting the rocks. Like my paddle is almost hitting the rock. Well, and she, she said we would have been in some serious uh, trouble if we hit the rock. Oops. Because she kept saying, what would, what would she always say to go forward? Like. Forward. Wouldn't she say like... Uh, she was saying just start. Double time or something like that. I forget what she would say. <laughs> Didn't she say, left side fucking move your paddles, damn it. Because <laughs> Jared's not paddling whoa. at all. I'm by myself. I have to double time it, she said. Well, and you would paddle like twice and just be done. I'm like, I'm tired. Yeah. Could hey, you imagine hey, Todd... Hey, medium shirt. Row faster with those arms. Could you imagine Todd trying to row? He'd oh be like... God. Oh my God. I got cardio for days, bro. I got cardio for yeah, days. Yeah, because he walks on a freaking treadmill. He thinks that does something. I do all You want to have a cardio of off? I do all kinds of you stuff. You want to have a cardio off? Yes. We, we had that. a cardio we off when we did the Mr. Wives off. music video. Yeah, that, that was not... That was after you smoked like 10 packs of cigarettes. I smoked 20 packs of cigarettes. <laughs> dance my ass off. 20 packs. Jared does it for like 30 seconds. He's like, oh my God. It's just beer. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. That's what happens when you stop... I was dancing with skating. cigarettes in my mouth. <laughs> Four cigarettes in my mouth. It was only for the video. That's why he had cigarettes in his mouth. Uh, no other reason why. Yeah, uh, none. Sure. That was so the I, day I quit, by the way. Yeah, I know. Do you have photos from uh, Steven? Did you have photos? Yeah, well, then we did the astrophotography stuff, yeah. too. This is an astrophotography photo. Uh, it's super easy to just point the camera at the sky and shoot it. Uh, the only the, hard part, the hardest part is focus. Yes. Trying to find out you're supposed to go to infinity and then pull back a little bit. What and I forgot, what I hate. but I'll tell you what I forgot the to live do. View. I forgot that last time I did it in the it somewhere is I turned on Green live Canyon. view. I zoomed in on like a bright ass star and locked in on that star. I'm figuring if this star's in focus, all Everything the other billions of stars are going to be yeah. in focus. Because it's so hard with every lens. It's different too with Nikon lenses at least. You can go to infinity, but then you have to go beyond, not beyond, beyond. a little back. And same with Canon. Canon lenses, it's a little better. You can go almost to infinity, and it's perfect. But with Nikon, for some reason, if you actually go to the infinity mark, it's, it's huh. past infinity at that point. Yeah. And this is another one of Jared's shots, too. Uh, and then I took some pictures, too. Uh, and all I did was I cranked up the, cla- the dehaze dude, and this purpleness comes out of the entire image. I don't know how that happened. All I did. 
Literally, didn't mess what with color. What were you setting, all. Stephen? And what lens were you using? I was using the twenty-four millimeter f one eight Nikon lens. This is before dehaze yeah. and after dehaze. Wow. Before, and then you have after. Wow, that after looks amazing. I mean, there literally, literally, all I did was pop that dehaze slider. To I like can't. I tried that. Mine didn't do that. Yeah. I wonder if it has anything to do with you popping the light in the. Front. I don't know. I just uh, had an iPhone light, and I just uh, light painted that entire tree for the foreground element. D eight fifty. 21.8? Oh, 21.8. That's what I had. Yeah, you had a 21.8. And I was at about 3,200 ISO, uh, maybe 1 15th of a second. No, no, no. 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Me. And at F2, maybe 2.2, two, two, something like that. I was pretty wide open. Right. With those, you could shoot at 1.8 still yeah. and do it. But uh, shooting this nighttime photography is not that hard. I have a video that will be coming out about that soon because we shot it there. Yep, yep. Um, any other photos from that or is that oh, this is another one? one I had with uh, one of the dead trees there I wanted to get more of a cool foreground element that looked like a desert um, there's a couple more that I have too but I didn't include them in here but yeah I like them I mean it, you could see actually more of the light pollution in the bottom of that image when it starts to get real yellow that's more of the city that you're seeing yeah um, but I went around we both went around and took a bunch of cool we were on top of the pictures. hill yeah it was fun yeah and that's that, right? That's the Bend I think Oregon that's trip. It, yeah, super fun. So I'll be editing that up, and we'll have another uh, like a mini review. More, a lot of video stuff. Well, too. it is a review, but see, the thing is, it's all shot with the D850, except for anything that looks from a drone, which or is a only GoPro. a couple shots because the Mavic messed up on us. And then the GoPro, I think the only thing we did was the motorcyclists. We threw it on him, and then we also threw it on for the kayak ride or the whitewater rafting. Yeah, yeah. So good trip. I, I enjoyed. And the thank trip. you, Nikon, for obviously uh, taking us out for that. Yep, and it's not sponsored. They didn't pay us. No, they just paid for us to they go. They paid for us to go, <laughs> which was great. And yeah. and dinner. Yes. And lunch. And beers. And breakfast. And uh, oh, we got sweet jackets. We did. I Nikon forgot to bring 100th it in. anniversary jackets. I was going to bring it in, but I from forgot. the company uh, called Champion. And <laughs> Champion. And we have the strap that we can keep. The hundredth anniversary I gave strap. Away. Did you? Yeah. At Alan's event. Oh, cool. I gave, I said, I said, Brandon, give this to somebody who could. Exclusive. So he gave it to a guy who had like a 15th anniversary Nikon D5, F5. Nice. F5. And then he gave him the 100 That'll go perfect strap. with that. It's a $99 wow. strap right there. Is it bro. really? Yeah, I think it's 100 bucks wow. for that piece of leather. They didn't kill a cow. What else we got? Um, I follow the White House on Instagram. Oh. Can we, I want Todd to critique this video uh, oh. That the White House put on as an Instagram story. Oh, yeah, you can't see it? see it. I don't think Todd can see it. Yeah. Oh well, then I'll critique it. Incredible. First off, great headroom. Oh yeah, yeah. It looks like a flying solo question, from what I recall. <laughs> oh yeah, awesome headroom. Uh, I believe that's Ivanka Trump, but I can't exactly hear her over the hissing of the audio that somebody shot with their phone. Well, she's asking you what lens she should get with her D500. Right. <laughs> um, so I just thought I would bring this on and just being saying this is uh, a, a, a major terrible fail. There's, there's so many things you could do. So let's be positive here. What did they do right? Nothing. Uh, what could they do better? Well, they Buy could get the guide to DSLR video. <laughs> they could get closer. <laughs> they could put a microphone. Did you know that you can get a, a video mic pro? Yeah. And plug it in? Yeah. Though I don't know you can plug it into the newer phones or not. There's a lot of audio options to go live and have better audio yeah. for or like Or stabilization. A or stabilization a freaking stabilizer. Too. Well, I thought Instagram automatically does like electronic stabilization no, when you, it does you not. use hyperlapse. No? Use no. hyperlapse. I use hyperlapse yeah, all the time. Does that still exist? Oh yeah. yeah. Hyperlapse I use for it's all great. of my videos. Yeah. I don't even yeah, open yeah, the camera I app. I just do hyperlapse and then it has that electronic VR yep. algorithm. Yep. And it's I love incredible. It. I use it all the time. Yep. <laughs> I haven't used hyperlapse in a long I forgot about that. Use app. it, man. Yeah. Hyperlapse is great when you're in a pinch. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I guess I have to remember that. So uh also, after we got home from being away for almost a whole week, uh, somebody else went away for a week. Steven. Me? Uh, yeah, I went to Vegas. Uh, well, I also went to the shore just for family vacation for maybe like two or three days. But I went to Vegas for the iHeartRadio Music Festival, and I worked on the photo team, the national photo team. So what? there's about six or seven of us. Have they seen your work? <laughs> and our job, I didn't photograph <laughs> Our job oh, well, was. See, that makes sense. Why did they ask that you to photograph? Sense. That makes sense. Well, because they already had this standard team that they've been using for like oh, seven right, years. So right. there was like twenty photographers, an insane amount of photographers. <laughs> they had backstage people, uh, people in the pit, people on red carpet. They Get had, in the pit. And they love hired. Someone. They hired Getty. They have a deal with them. So there's about ten oh, Getty guys wow. running around. Um, but my job was basically Not to 
at the arena, uh, which Dan, I think, has a couple of clips from the arena. Um, it's the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas, and you can see right here, giant freaking arena, brand new. This is the one that was just built like a year well, that's, ago. That's where the hockey team's ago. playing. Yeah, and this is inside. They called it the War Room, and there was about 50 or 60 of us. You're on laptops? Yeah, we had a laptops. We had laptops, all Macs for the most part, and then we also had a live feed of the show uh, that you could see. But if you... If you got a glance of my laptop, you could actually see I was pulling Getty images the entire time. So my job there for that show was to go get the Getty live links, pull all the red carpet shots, pull all the meet and greet stuff, pull all the backstage photos and put them, sort them in albums uh, and then caption them and do all that. So it was a little bit of a pain for that. But then we also did, this is the Kesha and Macklemore. Uh, actually, they're performing here. And this was pretty cool. This is what it looked like inside Tick the arena. Tock, went to body drop. So every once in a while, I would actually from, take a break mm -hmm. and go into the arena, and you can check out uh, all the live performances. You can go back and see what they shot because it would be in real time. Getty would upload everything, so it was really cool. Is there audio over those or no? No. Okay. And then this is the aftermath. This is what it looked like after Coldplay played. There's just confetti everywhere because they have the little butterfly confetti Look things at popping the out stars. everywhere. Then they shine But for then we did The Village. Me. The Village is their outdoor festival that they do for the second day. And my job there was to actually photograph, to edit images that day. The first mm. day was just captioning photos and pulling from Getty. The second day was working backstage with the photographers and editing each live performance. So the hard part was that there's 16 performers. Yeah. And I had to take their memory card at the end of each act and then edit and cull down and pick my selects within like 15 minutes. Yeah. And they would come back with like 200 images for like, one set, a 20 minute set, and I'd have to real quick find the best ones, get my keepers, and we did edit raw. At first they wanted to edit JPEG, and I'm like, nope, we all agree that we would do raw, and it worked out. And then some of the photographers actually had presets that they wanted the editors to use, like a very hipster, like muted, There should have just look. been one. If you wanted a preset, then Live so Nation agree. should have preset, given you a preset. Uh, I think iHeartRadio Heart, should yeah. have had uh, a consecutive, you know, just a standard preset for every photographer, every editor to use. Yeah, so it shouldn't be different. it all looks the same because there would, there would be images in the galleries that would be like a very faded, muted look, and then you'd have a very popped, you know, uh, really colorful image. And they would be side by side. So then you would keep flicking through the, al the uh, album and it would look like one is underexposed with that muted faded look and then one's like overexposed. Yeah, I hate so it was all over the place. But mm. it was just a very tough job because we were there all day editing. It was like 16 hour days. But in the end, it was cool because they had a little after party uh, at one of the nightclubs there. It was only, I was only there for about maybe four days and I caught up with a lot of my uh, previous coworkers. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing how many people they bring out to this event. There's maybe 100 to 200 people just backstage doing photo editing, doing uh, the video team alone was like 60 people, wow. uh, big social team, a little bit of everyone. A lot wow. of the talent there doing backstage interviews everywhere. That's a lot of was stuff. Was it better than the White House? <laughs> Way better than the White House in terms of quality, yes. Gotcha. The other thing to jump into was that the while we were away, Apple announced the iPhone 8, 8 yes. Plus, and the Don't Call Me the X 10. And uh, I, do, I so want to call it the X. I'm supposed X. to hopefully be getting Sounds cooler. Getting my hands on an iPhone 8 Plus on Thursday to test out that I don't get to keep but get to use for months um, to test out to see how the camera works. So the question is, what are they going to do when the actual 10 comes out? Do they just like are they going to do a nine still? No, They're I just gonna, think there won't be a nine. Are they just going to jump to 11? 11? I have no you know, idea. What's what's going to happen? No, I I don't know. Yeah. I can't even gander a guess. Yeah. So I just wanted to bring that up because I hopefully will be getting my hands on it to do some raw testing. And is there a lot of uh, different things in terms of the camera? Well, in the it's a new sensor, Plus. back back lit, backside illuminated. Do you know what's different with between the iPhone 10 and the 8 Plus? Is there that much? No, of a difference? I think they probably have the same sensors, and it's a larger sensor than before. Hmm. And they do have the new codec too, the new JPEG uh, uh, high, he, the Heek, Heek. H-E-I-C, the high efficient something codec. Which you can turn off and turn and back turn on. back to JPEG. So why don't we move on to the memes, Stephen? Yeah. We got memes going. So Todd, uh, how does this work? We tell Yeah, I mean, I guess Dan's going to show some memes, but I won't be able to see them. But so, you know what they are. Where do people send memes to, Todd? They, they send memes to sing wheel of fro at gmail.com. What's it say? My pick's bigger than yours? My pick's bigger than yours. Well, that's, um, that's Donnie. Donnie works over at La Colombe, and he has a black fist pick in his hair. And I was like, well, why don't I get a pick like that, Donnie? 
Look at how pale your legs are. I was working out. <laughs> I went that to the makes gym. him paler? You need to see the sun, Shut man. up. All next. right, so the next one is uh, uh, the rafty one. What's it say? It says, oh, look, SCS, uh, TCS TV, best photographer ever. <laughs> That's true. Next. Uh, the next one is from, from Sanchez. Took that. It's Kellyanne News. Oh, my you God. You have that one? No, what's it say? I can't see it that It says, part. Taco Bell Becky the movie. Kellyanne Conway just signed up. Oh. That oh. one's from Sanchez. He's getting in on the, on the fun. Sick burn, Sanchez. Yeah. And then I think we have a video clip if Dan's ready to run that one. Yep, we got a video clip. Let's spin that wheel. Let's do it. One day the wheel is going to spin off and go through the door. I'm waiting for it. That is from Stephen Pasco. That was Runaway a good wheel, he calls that. That was a really good one. So that's that, cool. that one's, it, it's a little difficult to comprehend these memes right now as we're trying to figure yeah, out Yeah, this how is we, the first time we've really we done do all this. live switching with a lot of media yeah. included. So yeah. well, it's a little harder to get used to it. Last time it, it was my computer plugged in for memes. So right now we don't have a long enough HDMI cable for Todd's computer. Exactly. We moved our whole live setup. I actually built a desk for Dan today. Uh, we didn't even get to talk about that. Um, so we have all of our live switching set up on the side of the room, 35-foot HDMI cables running to them, uh, running to the machine, and we just didn't have an extra one for time. Yep, so. yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So that's the memes. That's all we got. Cool, yeah. man. Those are the memes. This is the live edit. That's pretty much it, Stephen. Cool. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna wrap you to this. Um, It'll be I, a little, uh, little better, hopefully, the next couple of weeks in terms of uh, getting our pacing down. And well, the great thing is, it's done. That right now it could be done. Yep. With some minor tweaks, are going to take so maybe two hours of editing. You think? Yeah, probably not even. And that's even tweaking the audio because the audio does sound better after Stephen does the compression. It will sound much better. Yeah. Um, but not terribly too much better. But our goal is to have an awesome looking live stream that you guys can't even hopefully or a live edit that makes it hard to distinguish between the let's take freaking two days to edit the files versus Dan sitting over there and Switchy McSwitcher singing. Yeah. It, it. Yeah. So anything you guys want to end with? No. No, that's all I got. Good job, Dan. Number two in the can. Yeah, number two in the can for you. Hopefully, uh, we won't see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. And then uh, that that's it, guys. That's Raw Talk episode number 229. Please check out the D850 Real World Review. That sounded like stutter. <laughs> Please check out the Nikon D850 Real World Review. And be sure later today, if you're watching live, and it will already be live, uh, a photo news fix is going to go up hopefully later. But yeah, look for photo news fixes every Tuesday and maybe Friday if there's enough news. I'm going to start getting you guys on a schedule or uh, actually getting me on a schedule yeah. and we'll go from there. So yeah. thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Poland Fro knows photo.com. See ya.